Welcome to another episode of CSTV News. Last week was a very eventful time for U.S. politics. Our very own Parker Gauthier is here to report. Last week was very busy in the world of politics, between the Iowa caucuses, State of the Union, and the acquittal of President Donald Trump. Last Monday, Pete Buttigieg and Bernie Sanders both ended with 11 delegates after a delay in the reporting due to a coding issue in the app. Last Tuesday, President Trump delivered the State of the Union address to Congress, failing to shake the hand of Nancy Pelosi, which ended with Pelosi tearing up the speech and later stating, I shredded his State of His Mind address. The following Wednesday, the Senate voted to acquit the President on both articles of impeachment, Mitt Romney being the only Republican to cross party lines, voting to remove President Trump. Back to you, Jake. Wow, my brain hurts. This month is Black History Month, and SUNY Cortland has several events throughout the month that you might want to check out. This week, you can check out the Multicultural Festival, scenes from the African American theater canon, and much more. For more information, the event schedule can be found on the SUNY Cortland website. You can also speak to Dr. Seth Asuma, Professor of Political Science and Chairperson of the Africana Studies Department. Be sure to check out these events the entire month of February and bring a friend too. Now, Yulia reports on the coronavirus with several exclusive interviews. As concerns about the coronavirus continue to grow, there are over 31,000 confirmed cases across the globe with over 635 deaths. However, there is much misunderstanding around this virus, which has caused an uproar of discrimination against people of Asian origins. Last week, I sat down with Dr. Charles Lambia of Student Health Services to talk over these issues. So, coronavirus has historically always caused disease in the United States and worldwide. Most often it causes a common cold-like illness, and um, we don't test for it, and it doesn't really cause much attention. However, like many viruses, there are several subspecies, and coronavirus has subspecies, some of which almost exclusively circulate in animals, but occasionally they gain the ability to jump from an animal to human. And when they do that, um, our, we don't have any natural immunity to those viruses, and um, they can gain the ability to spread from person to person. Well, um, I don't have any particular information about the ethnicity of the cases in the United States, but I'm sure that they include non-Asians and people of all ethnic backgrounds who have traveled, vacationed, or done other things to the region. So I don't think um, it's rational or logical to um, use race or ethnicity as um, a specific risk factor in this uh, illness. and. Um, I personally haven't experienced it here on our campus, but I know that it, and have become aware of it on a more national scale. And I guess my response to that is, it's just not a logical response. Thank you, Julia, for that stellar reporting. Now to Nicole for some campus news. Hey Red Dragons, Nicole here with Campus News. You may have noticed something new in the dining facilities or on campus. In an effort to become more eco-friendly, all dining facilities have replaced plastic straws with hay straws. They are made from natural wheat stems and 100% biodegradable. You'll see a transparent dispensary box with the straws inside. Just turn the knob, grab your straw, and use! You are helping save the environment by using these straws. This is just one of the many ways you can help make a positive difference on campus. For more information, you can visit haystraws.com. Now to Parker with Entertainment News. Parker Senku, your campus cinema expert with CSTV Entertainment News. With awards season in full swing, I thought it would be appropriate to give my personal take on one of this year's biggest films. 1917, directed by Shawn Mendes, stars George McKay and Dean Charles Chaplin as World War I soldiers tasked with moving across enemy territory in a race against time to deliver a message that could potentially save hundreds of lives. 1917, in a lot of ways, is kind of like the Finding Nemo of the epic war drama genre. We have our two lead characters trekking along uncharted territory in search of a beloved family member who, without them, will presumably die, and they get into some pretty wacky antics along the way. I thought this film was great, and I really give Dean Chaplin credit in stepping out of his comfort zone with this role, really playing a different type of character than he's used to. As Game of Thrones character Tommen Baratheon, 
was known for being a quitter. Uh, he chose to throw himself from his bedroom window when the going got tough, really showing a lack of tenacity and coming across as kind of a herb. Now, on the other hand, Chapman's 1917 character, Lance Corporal Blake, he never quits, even when things aren't going quite his way. I think that's a book we could all rip a page out of. To wrap up, 1917 is a fantastic piece of cinema. It's fun for the whole family, lots of laughs. It's a movie that'll leave you satisfied and smiling as you exit the theater. I think everyone here in Cortland should see this one in the closest theater there is to campus. We're lucky to have a top of the line theater right around the corner. It's very clean, it's in a great area of town. See it there as soon as possible, you will not regret it. For CSTV Entertainment News, I'm Parker Senkew. Wow, I love watching movies on television. Now for some fun around Cortland. What's up guys, I'm Sam. And I'm Dina. And since it's the first week of classes, we're gonna be asking people questions about stress. Are you ready, Dina? Oh, heck yeah I am. All right, let's go. Hi guys, I have a question. What year do you think the stress ball was invented? 1950, 1975, 1988, or 1998? 1988. 1998. She's right, ah, sorry, sorry, sorry. Do you like stress balls? Do you use them ever? Just guess, I don't really use them often. Do you want one? Sure. Cool. Awesome. Hey, hey, I got a question. True or false? High amounts of stress cause a person's hair to turn gray. True? False. False, come on, no. Hi, sir, 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 I have a question. Stress can alter what levels? Hormone, white blood cell, blood sugar, or red blood cell? Uh, I don't know. He doesn't know. How does he not know? How do you not know that? What? It's blood sugar. Blood sugar, come on. Now you know. Now I know. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> sir, sir, I have a quick question for you. <laughs> don't stress out. <laughs> yeah, don't be stressed. How much do you think an average college student spends on textbooks per year? Oh my God, this year I spent like $400. <gasps> oh, oh. It's actually 655. Does that stress you out? Because that stresses me out. That's very stressful. I'm sorry! Ah. Hey. Yeah, take him out. There you go. Are you stressed after the first week? Not really. That's good. You should be, but that's good. Yeah, I should, but I'm not. Good. <laughs> Look at this guy. He's got it all figured out. Hey guys, um, are you stressed after the first week of school? Nah, it's, it's been pretty cool. What about you? Nah, I can't say. I don't get stressed. <laughs> oh, all right, big boy over here doesn't get stressed out. All right, all right. All right, guys, that was us asking people questions about how stressed they are after the first week of classes. Which clearly isn't a lot, so. I mean, oh, well, I'm Sam. I'm Dina. <laughs> Have a great semester. We'll see you next time on CSTV News. Very silly. By the way, Valentine's Day is this Friday. I heart you. If you're seeing this, text me back. And that's all we have for you. Have a wonderful week, and we'll see you next Monday.